unfortunately Viking Cruise Line has lost a crew member. We are also going to talk about some other stories in the news and what we can learn from it and hopefully um, learn from other people's experience so we don't have to make the same mistake. We're also going to talk about Celebrity and Carnival and Princess and just lots of updates today. So let's go ahead and get started. Hi there, this is Allison with Let's Go Travel Tips, and today is Monday. It is August 21st of 2023, and I wanted to start off super fast by inviting you to our live this evening. We always start at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, and we will update you if that changes at all, but we will plan on seeing you there. Bring your cruise questions and be ready for a fun time talking about cruising and all of the travel that goes with it, and I've got a fun question for you tonight, so be sure to come and join us. Also, if you would please subscribe to our channel, we would really appreciate your support and Gordon and I will benefit from having you with us as will the rest of our Let's Go family. We have an amazing group here and we need you as well. So also, um, so thank you and also if you appreciate these updates would you please give this video a thumbs up. That actually helps us a lot as well so thank you. So first off I um, am sorry to be the one to bear the bad news here today but I feel like I need to share it. Viking Cruise Lines, their Viking Mars ship was docked in the port of Cromarty Firth in Scotland on Friday and a crew member fell to their death. Um, apparently they were very swift with their emergency response, took them to the hospital and the crew member did perish and so he was um, from the Philippines and our were thoughts and prayers certainly go out to him and his family and so I would invite you to send your thoughts and prayers as well. Um, this is just so sad. It's so sad when anyone perishes with anything to do with cruising or really with anything else and so I just wanted to um, let you all know what's going on there and what they could maybe um, use some help with. Really quickly, um, on Saturday, I did my video letting you know about the challenges that some of the ships with Princess have been having um, keeping enough beverages on board. My inbox, I have gotten so many emails from those of you that have been sailing recently and they have been out of different beverages. Um, I think that the worst one across the board, if you missed my video on Saturday, go watch that. Um, I don't really know what's going on. I don't know if they need to realign how they do their supplies, whether it's how they order them, how they um, acquire them, but it sounds like some changes should be certainly underway so that they have enough beverages on board. I was thinking about how many new people are sailing with Princess these days, and surely if I went on a cruise line for the first time and they ran out of my preferred beverage, I would think twice about sailing on them again, so hopefully changes are underway. Let me know if any of you hear anything else about that, and surely please do share your experience. Now, um, it has been, we've talked about it, I've noticed on other channels today, and the headline truly of a family that lost they paid $60,000, just over $60,000 for a cruise and ended up getting back $2,500 from the cruise line and lost the rest because of flights. So um, I wanted to tell you all about it and kind of give you some of my takeaway that came to my mind as I was hearing that story. Some things that I'm going to remember for me personally, for Gordon and I, and also some things that I think are really important for all of us to think about. So this family had booked their um, cruise through Norwegian. It was an Alaska cruise tour. And they were going to go ahead and, well, clearly they were going to fly there from North Carolina. They decided... Um, to fly in the day of. They said that they had talked to customer service with Norwegian and they had said, well, no, you're okay, don't worry about it. And so they had left their flights on the same day that their cruise was going to depart. So they went and of course there were flight delays, flight cancellations, and in the end they did not make it there in time to get on their cruise. And they said that when they called and said, can we meet you at another port or just join the land portion, they, um, the cruise line said no on that. So here are a few of my takeaway messages. Um, first of all, they hadn't bought insurance. Buy insurance. Um, as I've said before, I know that when you're looking at your cruise, it is another expense. And if you're booking a super expensive um, trip like that for that many, for, you know, that would cost $58,000, yes, your insurance is going to be expensive. But at the same time, it really comes in handy when anything happens. With canceling your cruise, with illness, with injury, accidents, things like that, it is a really, really good, important thing to have when you book your cruise. And I think that most of us know that. 
But I just, that was a standout message right there. Another really important thing I would say is consider having a travel agent. And I know you think I say that because I am a travel agent, but you know, I met um, Brad and Tina Oaks because I wanted a good travel agent. And so that is how I met them, is I wanted them to be our travel agent. And because I could see that as things were changing forever, Gordon and I have booked our own cruises, done all of that. And clearly we've cruised enough to really know what we're doing. But at the same time, I also realized that things change a lot. And I want somebody who stays up on that. And um, that's how I initially met them, was it was wanting a good travel agent. And it's because, you know, we'd cruise with Princess Forever, and I was booking a Norwegian cruise. At that time, I wasn't familiar how Norwegian worked, and I wanted someone who was an expert at that. It's like when you want, um, if you want, um, you know, surgery, you know, you don't go to the plumber. And when you want your drain fixed, you don't go to the doctor. You go for who you really want help with. And that really stood out with me in this story because um, these are clearly like really good, very bright people. But this just was, they didn't know all of the ins and outs. And even calling customer service, you can't always believe, I hate to say it, what a customer service rep tells you. And it's not um, that they intend to defraud you. Sometimes they just don't know. And so when they got, um, when they said, oh yeah, fly on this, fly in on the same day that your cruise departs, um, I always think that's a red flag. You know me, I'm always like fly in the day before and um, you have to fly in the day before even if it's inconvenient, it means that you have to pay for a hotel stay, take another day off of work. Um, work with someone that is really good at that and it's like everything, there are you know people in every profession that are really good at what they do and the ones that are just okay. So find a really good one and stick with them and if you need a really good one, you are welcome to send me an email. Another thing that really stood out um, to me with this is to be aware, and this kind of goes with a travel agent, and a travel agent will tell you this, but when you book your flights with an airline, be very aware of how they work because they're different with different cruise lines. So with these people booking with Norwegian, um, when you book your flights with Norwegian, they book them. You don't choose your flights. They book them, and then you are in charge of that. Once they're booked, they are your flights, and if you want to do anything at all with them, if you want to reserve certain seats, if they get canceled or delayed, you are the one that contacts the airline, takes care of everything. With Princess, you they um, you know, you know ha you can choose the flights that you want when you book with Princess, but then once you start traveling, if there is any trouble with it, you you call princess and they are the ones who are supposed to reroute you help you get another flight whatever it is that you need so be aware of how your flights work and then um, the very last thing I would say is um, do a lot of research do a lot of research do a lot of research on where you're going and just kind of how things work where you're going um, I think that it's really important to do our best to really know what's going on with things and how um, different things are managed then you'll have a better idea of what to expect if things don't go perfectly smoothly so I would really like to hear the rest of you put in the um, comments below some things that really stand out to you that would really help all of us when we are thinking of how we are going to manage our cruises, manage when these things happen, because, you know, it's really easy to stand back and say, oh, they should have gone the day before. But you know what? They were doing their best. They were doing their best with what they knew. And when they had called customer service, that's what they told them. And so I think it's really important for us to all talk about good ways to manage things when things don't go as we had hoped, um, no matter the reason why, because you can't go back and change anything. You just have to do your best with the situation you're in at the time. So I really look forward to um, hearing your comments and um, seeing what you've got to say about it. So thank you. So back in in 2018, the Norwegian government made the decision that they were going to give eight years and they gave eight years to allow um, the cruise industry to make adjustments and figure out a solution, but they wanted it so that only zero emissions uh, cruise ships, zero emissions uh, marine vessels would be able to go into some of their fjords. And so Granger Fjord, Hellesilt, and Flom are some of the ones that um, are very frequently featured on Norwegian cruises for 
cruise lines that are going to be affected by these changes. So in 2025, you're going to have to be on a ship that has zero emissions. The Granger Fjord, um, actually, it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site, if you can imagine. I think it is surely beautiful enough to be classified as that. But the reason that I'm telling you about this is if you really want to go, and especially if you want to go on Princess, if you want to go on another large cruise line, maybe look at going sooner than 2025 as they don't have any zero emission cruise ships yet. Um, the new Sun Princess that is supposed to come out um, next year, the inaugural for that set sail on February 8th. It is, it's um, LNG and it can use both, but it's not zero emissions. And so I would say pay attention to where you really want to go and book your cruise so that you can go like in 2024 to be able to go to some of these places and we will be keeping an eye on the 2025 itineraries and on the different ships that will be able to go to those ports after that but I just wanted to give you another heads up about that. While we talk about destinations I wanted to bring your attention to earlier this summer we had a lot of fires in Greece and there are fires um, raging again in Greece there is a town called Alexandropolis, Greece, and as you look at the map, it's more over on the southeast um, coast there of Greece. So when you think of, um, it's over there closer to Turkey and everything. And I just wanted to make you aware of this um, so that if you are planning a cruise and you end up seeing a lot of smoke <laughs> and have any visibility, I was looking at the map and um, some reports from people and indeed some of that smoke is drifting into the ocean that I would bring you up to date on that. There are also big fires raging up in British Columbia and um, Carrie had commented on, on that for us. And so just be aware that we all just think, at least I do, of going on a cruise and everything um, being perfectly clear, but there is a lot of fires going on. So if you happen to be in an area that is affected by that, um, heads up, you'll know what that's all about. A quick update also about the Celebrity Equinox. You know, they announced that she is going to start sailing from the port of Port Canaveral next year at the beginning of December, December 2024. Well, along with that change, and I've been wondering about that, she was the ship that was set to sail a bunch of their South America 2024 or 2025 sailings, and those have now officially been canceled. I didn't know. Honestly, I was waiting. I wondered if they were going to rearrange some other ships and slide them in, um, you know, a different ship into sailing those but as of right now those have been canceled i don't know if celebrity is going to reposition another ship eventually and go to south america or if those sailings are just not going to show up at all for 2024 2025 the reason i'm letting you know is if you happen to miss the email on that if you happen to be booked on those or if you were looking at a south america sailing for 2024 into 2025 on the equinox those are officially canceled so if you have if you are booked on one you will get a refund and if you had booked using a future cruise credit that money that was the future cruise credit is going to become a future cruise credit again you won't get that back as cash so that's really interesting to me that they completely canceled all of those cruises um just a bird's eye view. I think that they clearly think that sailing out of uh, Port Canaveral and doing some more Caribbean cruises are more profitable for them than using that ship to do South America 2024-2025. So I'll keep uh, my eye out on what Celebrity announces about South America, but um, clearly they've decided to opt for the Caribbean there and Port Canaveral for the Equinox. Now a really fun thing, as you all know, um, Gordon and I are going to go on Celebrity Celebration, I'm sorry, Carnival Celebration on um, the Sailing is November 5th round trip out of Miami and I thought I would let you know I am like paying way more attention to everything to do with Carnival now that we are going to be sailing on that ship at that date and I am really actually very excited to try dining on Carnival. A lot of people tell me that the food on Carnival is really good. I've heard it's better than Princess, so I'm so excited to see what it's like. Well, um, a while ago, a couple of months ago, I want to say, I let you know that they had updated, Carnival had, a bunch of their menu selections, and they had started it out on just a couple of ships. They were adding more appetizers, entrees, and desserts, like 60 different things that they're going to rotate um, through the course of the cruise to give a wider variety for people to choose from. Um, but we have the dates, which is so fun, for when those new menus are going to roll out on a whole bunch of the other ships. Okay, so I'm going to tell you those dates really quickly. Um, the Carnival Radiance, August 18th, the Mardi Gras 
on the 19th, and then the Carnival Breeze and the um, Carnival Pan Panorama on September 2nd, the Carnival Celebration, which is what we'll be on, on September 9th. September 18th, we're going to have the Carnival Valor, the 28th, the Carnival Miracle, October 1st is the Glory, the 2nd is the Liberty, October 19th is the Carnival Sunshine, I love that name, and then the Elevation on, um, sorry, <laughs> The Carnival Elation on October 21st, Carnival Magic October 22nd, Carnival Paradise on November 9th, the Carnival Freedom on the 11th of November, Carnival Spirit on November 25th, and finally the Carnival Legend on no on December 3rd. So the Carnival Luminosa and the Splendor um, are going to get their new menus rolled out at the beginning of 2024, and then the Carnival Pride and the Carnival Venezia. Um, we don't know those dates yet. They're still going to come and then that brand new Carnival Jubilee. I want to try her out. Um, I'm so excited to try this because um, yeah I'm just really excited. Um, so the Jubilee is going to start sailing her inaugural cruise and her cruises to follow that um, out of Galveston. So it says soon after she starts sailing they will get their new menu. So I would like to think it would be pretty quick. You would think with a new ship they would just start off in the way that they intend to go forward. So I am really excited to tell you about the dining on Carnival as well as the overall experience, just everything to look forward to. Now, we have been talking about Hurricane Hillary over in the wet, on the west coast of the United States. It affected some cruises there that were going to Mexico and ships there in um, Southern California. Well, we have a new storm in the Atlantic. Um, Tropical Storm Franklin has formed and they are expecting for that to impact on Wednesday, um, Amber Cove and Port of Plata there in the Dominican Republic. Grand Turk already has storm warnings. Um, now, officially, I have not seen any itinerary changes officially out due to this. Um, I am sure the cruise lines are keeping a really close eye on how that storm goes. And you know how storms are. They try to project like when they're going to be where, but sometimes wind speed changes. Um, just all of these th factors can impact really when that hurricane is going to make landfall in different places. And so I thought I would let you know that... Um, they also think that um, Haiti also is not going to maybe have quite the brunt of the storm that Amber Cove and Puerto Plata will have, but it is surely going to feel it as well. But the carnival um, celebration is supposed to be in Amber Cove on Tuesday, and MSE Seascape is supposed to be in Puerto Plata on Tuesday as well. Um, they are just really keeping an eye on everything, it sounds like. And then... Um, Let's see, Carnival Magic is going to be at Grand Turk on Wednesday. And so we will keep our eye out for changes. And if any of you are on any of those ships, let us know what you're hearing and how it's going, as well as if you are on any other cruise line there in the Caribbean. If they make any announcements or give any information, send it along to us if you wouldn't mind. Now, um, we've got Let's Go family members who just embarked in the port of Vancouver on an Alaska cruise. And I thought it would be really valuable to let you know that they were blue. Lane. So they had to pick up their medallions and they also had to add a credit card to one of their um, people in their party and it only took them 16 minutes to get through the blue lane. So that was very encouraging. I think that's great that it's going quickly. Um, another thing I wanted to let you know, and this kind of goes along with talking about flying in the day before, they had just flown from Boston over to Vancouver and their flights were delayed the whole way. And so they didn't end up getting into Vancouver until 2.15 in the morning. So um, just another heads up to go the day earlier. But I really appreciated that um, she let us know how quick that blue lane went. She said that they really enjoyed getting on the ship, that the cabins were available at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. So they just went ahead and went to the buffet, enjoyed a nice lunch, and then they um, were able to go to their cabins at 1 o'clock and leave their luggage and do everything else. Um, the next thing, um, we just need to talk about suitcases really quick. And I know that that seems like such a basic way of traveling. And um, someone um, posted that um, their suitcase, the wheel got ripped off during the course of their flight. And um, they were wondering, you know, should I get an expensive piece of luggage? Should I just go buy the cheapest piece of luggage? And I loved the um, reading all of the comments that ensued. Um, you had people kind of on both sides, but a lot of people were saying um, kind of what Gordon and I have decided to do is just um, 
to get um, a cheaper piece of luggage because it's going to get ripped anyway. Gordon and I have done both. We, over the course of the years, we have bought very nice luggage and we have bought cheap luggage. So right now the suitcase that I am using the most is from Costco and it's it's just, it's not expensive luggage at all. Um, the matching, we got two matching sets and um, the one that um, had happened to be Gordon's got completely smashed, cracked open when we flew down to Buenos Aires right before COVID for our Antarctica cruise. So we taped it up with duct tape to be able to get home. But um, then when we replaced it again, we replaced it with another inexpensive suitcase that has done really well until just recently that the wheel is starting to come off again. So we need to get another one. Um, so I would like to hear in your comments below kind of what you do. I feel like um, sometimes, you know, when things are made cheaper, maybe they break a little bit easier. But at the same time, um, I know that the um, they sure do get thrown around a lot during the course of putting them on the airplane and getting them off the airplane. And when you have to load them up, they load them up into trucks to take to the ship um, or uh, well, that would be like on your huge cruise lines, but even on some of the smaller ones um, that your luggage gets transported for you and can get banged a little bit. So tell us in the comments, do you buy expensive luggage hoping it will last better or do you buy the less expensive luggage just figuring it'll last until it gets broken then I won't be out so much. Um, we can talk about that a little bit more this evening as well as if you would like. So I really appreciate you all being here with me. Thank you and I will be talking to you all again really soon. You all take Take really good care. God bless you. Love you. Bye-bye. <laughs>